No! I, I mean, I always heard you was a rocket scientist. You really are a rocket scientist. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, alright. Off to a good start. I always worry about saying it wrong. If you're into ballistics, everybody knows your name. Right, so I you know, I've always been on a path towards ballistics. Aerospace engineering was the closest thing I could go to school for to ballistics, so I did that at Penn State. Um, came out of there and worked in a, a National Air and Space Intelligence Center for six years, uh, doing modeling and simulation of threat uh, threat air weapons. So that's, uh, that's where I learned all the modeling and simulation side, which a ballistic solver is really just a, a simulation, right? right? Small arms, so, um, you know, started out doing that with, you know, guided missiles, and then after that it's pretty easy to do it for bullets. So that's that's where I was always headed. Uh, I've always shot competitions since I'm in high school, uh, still do. So that's, that's kind of my background. We got some, you know, over the years our equipment has improved, you know, our instrumentation for ballistic testing. We're all the way to Doppler radar now. We got several Doppler radars. We got a mobile lab. So it's uh, it's been a fun journey, man. So this, okay, let's go back to the radar. With this radar, like, tell me some of the stuff like that you can tell me on. That's you know, that you're cleared to tell me on. Yeah. So what, what are you doing with it this week? So what the radar fundamentally does is it tracks objects that are changing speed. Okay. So bullets go out and they're you know they've got a, a velocity. Anything that's got a velocity relative to the antenna, it's going to track it. Okay. Whether it's constant speed, accelerating, decelerating. Common misconception is that the radar can physically track the bullet where it is in space. But the kind of radar we have, it doesn't do that. It doesn't give you XYZ coordinates, but it, what it does give you is a very accurate track of the bullet slowing down, the velocity track. And from that, with atmospherics, we can determine a very accurate drag for that bullet, not just a ballistic coefficient, but the drag at every point. It's literally pinging the bullet several times a foot as wow. it flies, you know, up to two miles or more. We can track big things with the radar. Well, that's so you you learn all kinds of stuff from that. Oh yeah, you can see where bullets have stability problems at transonic. You can see, you know, if there's launch dynamic problems right out of the muzzle. Um, you have such good resolution on that velocity track that you can you can tell where bullets have troubles. We had bullets yesterday. We were shooting. Just past transonic, they turned around and started flying backwards. They were very stable, flying backwards. That's what Todd was telling me, and that's and he, and you did it like like consistently, like five times or six times or something. Yeah, there were five variants of that bullet, and we shot ten uh, about five rounds of each, and all of those tracks were right on top of each other. So it happened very consistently at the same Mach number, and it was the first time we'd seen something like that. Usually, when they go trans or when they go unstable, it's chaos, right? It's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. static. But these suckers, they flipped around and they were perfect equilibrium flying backwards in sub. That's so cool. All right, well, well, let's get back on these targets. I got a target coming up right here. Blue target in the bottom. Yeah, man. Good. All right, another target coming up. Brian, here's a question for you. So, so a lot of people on Instagram, they've seen um, where I shot this deer at 3,290 meters. And it's, it's stuff that, you know, of course, Todd's giving me the dope. And it's all fun stuff. But it looked like the bullet went into his lungs and then it actually spun and then come out his neck. So, so just kind of tell, tell me what's going on there. What, what's all going on at that speed, at that distance? As with my 300 normal. Yeah. So when when you when you hit a, an animal at, at you know normal ranges, you know where the bullets hitting fast enough to expand, they they go pretty much on a straight line through. When you hit some at that distance, the bullet is not carrying enough velocity to really expand well. You know, it's around two miles. You know, the bullets hit and they kind of act like solids. They just kind of retain their shape. Which bullets you shoot at that distance are really long. So when they hit, they don't mushroom. 
they just kind of, if they get turned inside the animal, they just kind of take a new track. So okay. it's, it's not uncommon for uh, a bullet at low speed that's not deforming or fragmenting to kind of just turn and either tumble or go a different direction than, than your line of fire. I got you. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, man. A lot of a lot of amazing things happen when bullets hit things. You know, I I used to think I knew. You know, I could make a good estimate what would happen when bullets hit something, and then I started like paying attention, and none of my insight is really correct. Yeah, so. I know. I mean, to be able to go that far, that straight for two plus miles, and then all of a sudden take a right turn. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, well, the bullet's stable in the air. It's not stable yeah. in, you know, fluid. It, and it just doesn't have enough to, enough momentum to expand and, and keep going forward at that distance. So. Yeah, and the thing about expansion, though, you know, a lot of guys, hunters, worry about uh, expansion on bullets at extreme range. And most of the time, when you're hitting uh, game animals at extreme range, um, you're, you know, you're not hitting them with 22s or 6 mils. You're hitting them with with bullets that are already quite large. Right. And so they don't necessarily have to expand. In fact, those bullets often tumble. And if you imagine the cross section of a, a long bullet going sideways through something, oh it's effectively God. expanded. You know? Yeah, it's tearing up. It caused a lot of damage. That is so cool. All right, let's just wear them out. Change. Hey, okay, almost good out this time. It's hard nope. to tell. It's hard to tell if we're hitting them inside. Yeah, that car. That, that, I promise. If you're hitting them, they'll wiggle. <laughs> All right, come come way left on this one. That was right over the top. Well, that one's hard. Yeah, that's really hard. Oh, uh, we're working on some improved ammo types. Um, you know, just more consistent really is what it is. One of the weak links in the kill chain right now for snipers is consistency of ammo. You know, standard deviation on muzzle velocity, standard deviation on BC also is something that a lot of guys don't realize every shot isn't the exact same BC and some bullets are worse than others. So we're working on ammo that really has consistent muzzle velocity, consistent BC, keep that vertical dispersion minimized at long range, improve hit percentage. That's kind of the objective there. And then last week we finished up the Extreme Sniper Strike Operation uh, training. We delivered the last of our weapon systems. That's the 375 enabler. Hey man, we were out here last uh, last summer. Yeah, so we shot it. Yeah, that. yeah. That's a that's a crazy looking bullet. I know you're used. To, you're telling me you're used to looking at it. everything else looks weird, but oh yeah, yeah. We shot so much 375 enabler there for a time. Like it got to look so normal that when I pick up a 308 or something, I'm like, this doesn't even fit in my hand. You know? <laughs> this looks weird. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's crazy. Cool stuff. What we got? All right, so we got the car again. Let's get the uh, fat girlfriend in the front, and then I'll spin around and we'll get the in-laws in the back. All right. That, that girlfriend's hard to see, but she's in there, I promise. Master seat. Good. Got a hit on it. Get them in-laws. <laughs> if it wiggled, it didn't wiggle much. <laughs> Alright, let's go dump some brass. <laughs> <laughs> 